What do you do when someone tries to destroy your life? What do you do when somebody is trying to destroy your plans, the projects for you and your family? How do you react? How do you deal with that? Perhaps it is happening in your circle of friends, acquaintances, colleagues at work, classmates, perhaps even family members that want you not to be successful. They want you to fail. Remember that every plan that we have will always be met with opposition. Do not wait for the whole world to agree with you. Do not wait for everybody to accept your plans. Actually, all that matters is that God is in agreement with your plans. And if there is an agreement with God, then move forward. If you are going through a difficult moment in your life, and you feel that someone or something is trying to harm you, hurt you, or destroy your happiness, then pay close attention to the story of Nehemiah, how he dealt with this problem, a similar situation, how he overcame this problem, and how he still succeeded in the end to keep a clean heart and to build the walls of Jerusalem accomplish his mission. God had given him a project, and when the project is from God, then he will help us to make it come to pass. It is important to keep your eyes on the one that gave you the project. Let's read here. But they thought to do me harm, so I sent messengers to them saying, I'm doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? But they sent me this message four times, and I answered them in the same manner. Very well. So there are two things we can learn here with the reaction of Nehemiah. Nehemiah a cup-bearer of the king, an ordinary person chosen, appointed by God to fulfill God's project by rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Look what a big responsibility God gave him, and he accepted the project of God. So, immediately, the devil, using people around him, trying to block him, trying to delay his project, discriminating him, bullying him, doing everything possible for him to give up. But Nehemiah's response was excellent. Nehemiah didn't go, get into a boxing match. He didn't get into a war of words. He didn't entertain their behavior. So he didn't get involved physically. He did not even meet them or speak to them in person. The Bible says here he sent messengers. Look how uh, simple you can solve a problem. So he distanced himself emotionally did not allow this problem to affect his heart, and he sent a messenger. Why would you leave your work? Why would you leave your project to entertain people that don't believe in you, that try to harm you, that try to belittle you, and they don't want, to they don't want you to succeed? So this is the first lesson. And of course, Nehemiah being intelligent, he learned from the mistake of Eve in the Garden of Eden because we can learn from the mistakes of people that lived before us. It's much better to learn from the mistakes of others than to make the mistake yourself. Eve made a mistake because when the devil came knocking, she
she opened the door and she replied the devil. We can learn here that whenever the devil comes knocking, and the devil will surely come knocking on your door, on my door, everybody's door, especially when you are working on the project of God, then learn this. When the devil comes knocking, don't open the door. Don't answer. It's like your mobile phone when you know there's somebody calling you, disturbing you with advertising calls. What do you do? You press that button to block the caller permanently and never again they can disturb you. You don't need to pick up the phone to say, hi, are you an advertiser? Please don't call me anymore. You don't do that. You just block that person. You don't even speak to them personally. So we are already practicing this every day in our lives. Now we need to practice this on the spiritual end, on the spiritual side, when it comes to protecting our faith. If you don't know how to practice this, how will you be able to achieve your plans and projects? So, if you need um, to learn the second lesson, then come with me here. But they sent me this message four times and I answered them in the same manner. Conclusion, the second lesson we learn here, the devil perseveres. Negativity perseveres. The devil is not stronger than God. But the devil is very perseverant. And Nehemiah, he gave the same treatment to the devil over and over again. The same answer, the same treatment, the same reply. Nehemiah did not need to invent something new. Nehemiah was perseverant. When you persevere more than your competition, when you persevere more than the devil, when you persevere more than the naysayers, the negative crowds, the criticism, as long as you persevere longer, you'll be victorious. And if you lack perseverance, the only solution is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit that gives us perseverance. You may not be stronger than other people. You may not be smarter than other people. There may be people in this world that are richer, wealthier, stronger physically. There are people in this world that, are, that have higher qualifications. That's all fine. In this world, there's always somebody that does something a little bit better than others. But as long as we have the spirit of perseverance, the quality of perseverance, then we will win all the time. All right. So this is a quality that you need in order to be successful. And for more information about the power of the Holy Spirit, and acquiring and building up perseverance for your professional life, for your family life, for your health, for your spiritual life. Scan the QR code and learn more about achieving excellence through perseverance. Okay? Being consistent. We are located here in Kowloon. You can join one of, one of our meetings. And especially, we are going to be here in the weekend with the Lord's Supper. And I believe the Lord Jesus Christ is a wonderful example of perseverance. Jesus Christ received the name above all names because he persevered. A quality that only he is able to give to his servants, to his children, okay? So the meetings are going to be in Tagalog, in English, and in Chinese. And don't forget, we are getting ready for our Blessed Oil event in Queen Elizabeth Stadium on September 15th, Sunday, 3 o'clock, okay? You can scan the QR code for you to get your free tickets. Scan the QR code for you to reserve your seat, and you'll be able to receive a small bottle of Blessed Oil in our annual event happening only 
once a year. You're invited here in Hong Kong. If this message has helped you unlock um, doubts, questions, and answers that you are looking for, then share the link with somebody that needs to resolve doubts and needs answers to the questions that they have. We're going to be back again tomorrow with the Voice of Faith. Join us again. God bless you abundantly. Bye-bye.